let's get going. We are gonna go through a little bit on immunity today. So if we just have a look at this bit of the spec here. So on this bit of the specification, what it's actually saying is that each type of cell has specific molecules on its surface that identify it. These molecules include proteins and they enable the immune response. You've got a particular molecule on the surface, which is a protein. That is essentially an antigen they've described, um, but it's worth knowing that's how they phrase it in the spec. So you need to know that the molecules, such as proteins, that can enable immune response are these ones here. We've got pathogens, Cells from other organisms of the same species, what that means is transplants. So if you've had an organ transplant, for example, abnormal body cells, that is referring to cancer cells, typically, and then toxins. That might be some sort of toxin that's been produced by um, an pathogen. We've also got down here the definition of an antigen. What I'd also say for this is, um, bear in mind that if you've got a definition literally given to you in the specification, then you know that that will be the exact wording they'll ask for in the mark scheme. So where we've got here the definition for antigen, um, so you need to know that, although I've realized I've not actually told you what the definition is, so I'll go through one with you. The effect of antigen variability, phagocytosis, response of T cells, response of B cells, and then a little bit about antibody structure. So this is some of what we're going to cover this evening, and we'll keep coming back to the spec, but I'm going to go through different activities with you as we do that. Um, now, I did also just want to do a quick shout out to all of my... I was going to say past and present, but I don't have any present Woodford students. But a big shout out to all of my past Woodford students. If I do have any Woodford students here, then do a shout out in the comments. And I also need to do another shout out for, um, was it, oh, I can't remember your teacher's name now, but she was talking to me on Instagram. I think it was Mrs. Wallia. And she apparently gives you homework every Thursday to watch these lives and she said it's half term at the moment so she didn't really think you'd be watching but she said she's going to do this as a test to see if you are watching let her know and um, when you go back to school that is okay so let's have a look at some of this information then what i've just flicked over to is my notes so we can get some of the things that i said weren't in enough detail on the spec so first thing I've got here is just a little bit more detail than we've got in the specification. So we've got each type of cell has specific molecules on its surface. Those are proteins. Um, but you need to know your definition of an antigen as well. So your antigen, that is here our definition of an antigen. Antigens are foreign proteins that generate an immune response by lymphocyte cells when detected in the body. So they are these tertiary structure proteins. They generate an immune response and they're found on the cell surface. So that'd be your key idea for an antigen. We had on the spec here already what molecules would trigger an immune response. So pathogens, but I just went into more detail here. So pathogens that could be bacteria, fungi or viruses such as HIV. Cells from another organism of the same species. So that could be um, the antigens on the cells from an organ transplant. We've got abnormal body cells such as cancer and then toxins because some pathogens such as cholera release toxins. But then it says you need to know about antigen variability. So I've got a bit of information here and then I'm gonna skip over to try some questions. So pathogenic DNA can mutate frequently. And if a mutation occurs in the gene which codes for the antigen, then the shape of the antigen will change. Now, more specifically, I'd add in here, pathogenic DNA can mutate frequently. That might result in coding for a different protein and therefore you get a different tertiary structure. And if you get a different tertiary structure, then that is why the shape of the antigen might change. If the shape of the antigen changes, any memory cells 
that you might have for a particular antigen for a particular pathogen already, they will now have a memory of the old antigen shape. And therefore, if you are exposed to this pathogen, which is mutated, which now has a different shape antigen on its surface, that means these memory cells are gonna differentiate into plasma cells that produce antibodies that are no longer complementary in shape to the antigen on that pathogen. So you're no longer immune. And that's what we mean by antigen variability. And that's why you may not be immune to a particular pathogen anymore if they have gone through this. And one example of that is influenza. Influenza virus mutates and changes antigens very rapidly. That's why there's an annual flu vaccine is to take into account this antigen variability. And if you think about covid that's why there's been so many different variations of the covid vaccines because of this antigen variability the covid virus the genetic material kept mutating so there are new versions of the virus with different shaped antigens so let's have a look state what would happen if a non-self cell is detected state what would happen if a non-self cell is detected so let's add in some ideas for this what would happen if a non-self cell is detected so it would trigger an immune response now this one there was only one line to be able to fill in so it's not wanting the whole cell mediated response or the B cell response. And in fact, I have designed this to match up to the spec. So we had the non-self cells trigger an immune response. Now we have to try and remember what were the four examples that we had on the spec of what could be a protein or on the surface of different cells that would trigger immune response. This is quite a common exam question linked to this topic. So we've got to try and remember. So now we're moving on from the information where we were checking our understanding this would now count as active recall because we're testing, can you remember it? So we've got to try and remember then, what would these be? Um, oh, actually, I'm just gonna quickly see, I've seen a question come in. What is actually meant by a self cell? That's a good question. I did actually skip over that. I'm gonna come back to this because that's a really good question. What is meant by a self cell? I have actually got a section on that in my notes because it didn't really cover that in the spec. So a self cell are cells that naturally occur within your body because your body will have its own set of antigens on its cells. And in fact, you have about 10 million different types of lymphocytes in your body and each one recognizes a different shaped antigen. All of your lymphocytes were made when you were a fetus and when you're a fetus in the womb, because you are basically protected, you're not going to be exposed to any pathogens, really. That means the only cells that you should be exposed to when you're a fetus are your own cells. So what then happens is those 10 million different lymphocytes, the lymphocytes that are complementary to the antigens on your self cells when you're a fetus those lymphocytes, those cells will die or the production of them is stopped and suppressed. So that then means you will no longer produce lymphocytes that have receptors complementary in shape to the shape of the antigens on your own cells. And that is why your own lymphocytes shouldn't attack your own cells. Now that does actually go wrong sometimes. That's what an autoimmune disease is. Um, sometimes that process doesn't work properly and you do actually still produce the lymphocytes which are complement or have um, receptors complementary in shape to your own antigens and that can then lead to an autoimmune disease but essentially a self cell is one of your own body cells that um, has a particular shape antigen that your lymphocytes any lymphocyte that has that shape shouldn't exist so that's what we mean by non-self cell. Then we had to, I could see in the chat, someone did um, give some ideas. So I've got abnormal cells, pathogens, um, cells belonging to, oh, so I think people are actually asking, answering the question. We've got a state, what could it be? So we need to have 
pathogen. Then we could have cells from another individual of the same species. Individual. So that was our transplant example. Toxins, I can see lots of you saying toxins. Yep, let's add that one in because that was at the bottom. And then cancer cells. Um, some of you have also said abnormal body cells. Abnormal body cells, that counts as well. Brilliant. Okay, it looks like the chat is actually pretty much up to date. So let's see how we do then at this fill in the gap. Lymphocytes are made when you are a what? Do you remember? Because it's a good job. I did go back to my notes then. The lymphocytes are made when you are a what? Okay, I can see fetus is coming in on Instagram. It's fetus. Right, next then. When you are a fetus in the womb, you are unlikely to be exposed to any other cells other than something cells. So it's this gap here, other than something cells. What do we reckon? Self, yep, so Sophie is in first. Oh, and I can see Holly's got an answer in as well. Excellent, yep, so that would be self cells. The lymphocytes complementary to the antigens on self cells will die or production will be. So that one would be suppressed this is to prevent the lymph um, prevent your lymphocytes from attacking your own cells so what you might notice is the active recall workbook aligns to the notes so if you have got my notes and if you haven't and you don't want to buy them then you could use my youtube videos instead because they're available for free and make your own notes because they pretty much match up it's just my notes come in more detail because you get all the keywords listed and not only that you get let me just take you to the end of this section you get the key points summarized and you get all of the essay links as well but the point i was making is if you do have my notes then it's really useful to go through the theory first and the notes looking at how it connects to the mark scheme you could then always like pick out the key points so we saw from the mark scheme that you needed to know these four particular examples. So I'm just going to do transplants, cancer cells, toxins, just so those four stand out. We said that they're usually proteins. So just picking out from my notes, what was it from the spec? So we've got the spec here. Check the spec against the notes to highlight the key information. Once you've tested that or checked that you understand that, then you can go on to test them yourself without using my notes, but it does match up. So if there is anything you can't remember, then you can look back at those. So we won't do all of this. It's just to give you an idea. You could then go through your description of phagocytosis. We've got the T lymphocytes information, B lymphocytes, a bit on antibodies and it carries on for this topic and it does come with an answer booklet as well but what i'm going to skip to next is let's have a go at some flashcards. so definition of antigen if you start writing that in the chat box that's what we're going to have a go at next then testing you for your definition of antigens let me get rid of this so you can see how you did got proteins on the cell surface membrane and it triggers an immune response when detected by lymphocytes. Next then, antigen variability. So antigen variability, what would you say for this one for your definition? Seem to be getting answers coming through quickest from Instagram. Definition we have is when pathogenic DNA mutates, causing a change in the shape of the antigen, previous immunity is no longer effective as memory cells don't recognize the new shape of the antigen, specific antibody no longer binds to the antigen so there's our definition physical barriers and phagocytes we haven't talked about but for the physical barriers what that one means is you need to list some examples of physical barriers meaning what's a physical barrier to try and prevent a pathogen from being able to enter and then like enter your bloodstream physical barriers include skin stomach acid and sometimes people don't realize that that is one although i can actually see Really, you have got that as an answer, so that's really good. Um, stomach acid counts as a barrier because so it's preventing it from the pattern, hopefully, from getting into the bloodstream. Lysozymes and tears counts. I can see Holly, you've also got hydrochloric acid. Varisha, you had skin, that's a good one. 
Honey had mucus, that's good. Let's move on to phagocytes. What would be your definition of phagocytes? Oh, actually, I can see on Instagram, Madeline, you had skin, cilia, stomach acid, some of you had eyelashes. So, so we've got, um, I think that's your definition of phagocytes, white blood cells and just pathogens. So I know you've got white blood cells which engulf pathogens. They're non-specific, good extra detail there. So if you white blood cell that engulfs a pathogen, Charlotte, antigen presenting cell that engulfs a pathogen. Let's take a look. So for phagocytes, Phagocytes, non-specific immune response. Someone did have that extra detail. Phagocytes come antigen presenting cells. You could actually also say, yeah, it's a type of white blood cell. So you could have that as well. You might have said it's macrophages are examples also. Right, T lymphocytes. Let's have a go at what would you say is your definition of a T lymphocytes? So we're doing this flashcard now. T lymphocytes. What would be really helpful as well is I'm going to save these videos and I'll put them up as well. If you comment on it, which bits did you find most helpful? But if there was any particular bit that you found helpful, it depends if you've been here for the whole thing. Did you find it helpful? Just reviewing the spec, for example, what it actually meant, seeing how that then links to my notes. We went through a bit of information from the notes. Would you have rather have done more of the active recall workbook or are you preferring the flashcards the most? Just so I get an idea of what to spend more time on. That would be really helpful so I know the best thing to do to be able to help you. So T lymphocytes, let's go to definition for T lymphocytes. So you should have had for this, they're made in the bone marrow mature in the thymus. You wouldn't literally have to know that for the spec, but that's why they're called T lymphocytes. T stands for the thymus. The key thing you need to know is they're involved in the cell mediated response. They respond to antigen presenting cells. You might have given me some examples. You might have said that they differentiate into cytotoxic and T helper cells. I can see, I think Maheen said that. So you've got that answer as well. Right, I'm going to leave it there for this evening. So I can see it's 25 to 9. It's Halloween. You need to go and have some Halloween fun, whether that's just go and watch a uh, an episode of Wednesday or a film, whatever it might be. But that is the end of our immunity lesson. But that is it for today. Goodbye, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your evening and I'll see you next week. <laughs>